Okay, so we are going to think about the integration concept. We know it's an antiderivative, but what's it really mean also from a different perspective? And this is going to hit us on to the fundamental theorem of calculus. But to start us off, let's do something that we do know. I have a distance an object that can travel is modeled by this distance function. What is the velocity of the object at time t? Well, velocity is the rate of change of distance, like kilometers per hour how distance is changing. So it is the derivative. The velocity is equal to the derivative of the distance. It's the rate of change. So I get 10 t plus 3 by power rule. I want to find the velocity at 2. So velocity at 2 is going to be 10 times 2 plus 3, which is 23. And there's no units given is my velocity. So when I take the derivative velocity, or sorry, when I take the derivative of a distance, I get the velocity. So let's think about this then. I'm going to assume a car drives at a constant speed at 80 kilometers, 7 hours. How far did he travel? Well, here's my 80 kilometers. He traveled for 7 hours, which is here. Well, how far did he travel? Well, I just mul I just going to multiply these two things here. 80 times 7, which is 560 kilometers. So where do I find 560 kilometers? Well, if this is 7 and this is 80, this area here is 560 kilometers. So this is my velocity. The red line is my velocity. And I did for 7 hours. And underneath the velocity is the distance which makes me think. What it makes me think is that the area underneath the curve, the distance is represented by the area under velocity. Well, I know that if I have velocity, that is the derivative of the distance. So if I want to find the distance, I undo the derivative, the, I undo Sorry, if I want to find, if I'm given velocity and I want to find the distance, I undo it by div taking the integral, and this will be back to my distance. And I find that underneath the curve. So if I consider cars traveling from zero to 50 kilometers an hour, and it steadily increases over five hours, if, again, I'm looking for the distance, it is represented by the area underneath the velocity curve. That's the distance. The distance is uh, at 5 will be, well, 5 times 50. Find the area of the triangle. Half 5 times 50, which is 125 kilometers. And so this area of the triangle is quite easy to do. It's under, the area underneath represents the distance. So the area underneath velocity is the distance. Also, the antiderivative of the velocity is the distance. So the area under velocity equals distance. And I also know that the integral of velocity is also equal to distance. And so the integral is equal to the area underneath the curve. And that's a key idea. The area represents the, the integral, the antiderivative. Now this works really nice with nice triangles. But what happens, or nice squares, what happens when I have a curve? Well, this was a problem that was posed some years back, and what they started to do, and Riemann was the guy who thought of it, is he decided if he's going to find the area from 1.31 to B here, he did it different ways, but one way he did it is he found that, broke it up into intervals, and then he took this rectangle plus this rectangle, and he used that as an approximation of the area. But then what he thought about is if I take it and make my rectangles, make my rectangles less wide, and I made lots and lots of rectangles, my estimates started getting better and better and better and better. 
And so what he did is he had, he took it so, he took it until the, the, the width of a rectangle went to infinity. Or sorry, it went to zero, the opposite of infinity. It went to opposite of infinity goes to zero. So the change goes to zero. So there's an infinite amount of these rectangles. And when he added them all up, he realized that that was the area underneath the curve. So that's called a, re a Riemann sum. And so it's a sum of rectangles. So what this symbol here means, this is saying the sum of all the rectangles of my velocity curve underneath the velocity curve is equal to the distance. So let's formalize a little bit. Here is the fundamental theorem of calculus. If the derivative of capital F equals little f, then the integral of little f, so the integral of both sides, the integral of this is going to be the big F of x. So that means, what this means is that the derivative and the integral are inverses of each other. They undo each other. Similarly, how ln is the inverse of e and e is the inverse of the ln function or cosine x versus arc cos x, they undo each other. Derivatives and integrals undo each other. But oftentimes when we've done in the past, we've done uh, without the letters here on the side, and we always had to add c. And c could be any value unless we we're told a specific point. But let's talk about this c a little bit. And if I recognize that the area of the curve goes from A, A here, to B, and I can change my B to be any value I want, right? And I th often think about if I start here, I recognize if it's so small A and B are on top of each other, the area underneath the curve is zero. And I often think about it as B changes, my area increases, and the area is a function of this letter B here, which we often call x. So the area is a function of x. So that's what this is saying. So I start at A, and I go to x, and it accumulates area. As I accumulate area, it makes a function, my area function here. As I change my area, this x changes the area. So if I want to look at this, if I start off, I'll say, well, if x equals a, so then if it goes from a to a of f at t dt is equal to capital F, which is the integral of little f, a plus c. But if we think about taking the area from a to a, this area here is 0. So 0 is equal to f of a plus c. And so c is equal to minus f of a. And so if I go back now, x, I'm sorry, oh, I take the integral from a to x of f at t. Then I know it's f of x minus f of a. And if I want to fix x, so I want to find a specific area, if I want to find this area here, I fix x. Let's plug it in for b. So I'm going to take the integral, the area from a to b, of f of t dt. And that's going to equal to f at b minus f of a. And this is the fundamental theorem of calculus, that the area underneath the curve from a to b is equal to the antiderivative of value at b minus the antiderivative value at a. And that is a big, big deal. So what I can say, if I have my function, if I differentiate, if I find the derivative, I get f prime of x. If I integrate, I get capital F of x. 
and I can go either direction really to go from one to the next. Now the last thing I want to talk about though and theoretically speaking is this area here and if I look here here is the approximate area underneath the curve 14.9 as I go this way the area is getting larger watch it get larger it's getting larger and larger now at this moment it crosses the x-axis watch the area it's getting smaller and the reason why it's getting smaller and now hold on watch it now it's gonna get larger is because it is area underneath the curve but it's a little bit more than that it has a signed area underneath the curve so if I go from A to B in this direction this is a positive area and this is a negative area this starts at A and goes to B negative to positive however if I start at B if I switch them around I can't do that on this demo then this negative to positive it switches them around but the biggest idea is below the curve is below the x-axis is negative above the x-axis is positive 